Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be doing a kind of like a review or overview of this new Lenovo ThinkPad L15. This is the second generation and this is the Ryzen AMD uh, Zen 3 edition. So this has got the Ryzen 7 Pro uh, 5850 CPU in here. Um, and then I, as you can see it's with the docking station um, and it's driving three... Three external 1440p 144Hz monitors, um, so you can drive up to four independent displays. That is the main, that is one of the biggest advantages with going with the Ryzen CPU as opposed to the Intel equivalent in these because it gives you four independent displays plus the monitor uh, display itself, so that's four displays, so three plus one. As opposed to with Intel, you're limited to two external plus the built in, or you can do three external but no built-in display it'll be turned off so maximum of four displays on the AMD versus three on the Intel so that's one of the main uh, selling points for those who are um, getting this as a power user for productivity so it's kind of like a workstation notebook being a ThinkPad it's a business laptop um, but wanted to go over some of the key things here so aside from the multiple displays that you can do um, you can either mirror them or you can extend them I have all of them extended so if we go to display settings here, you guys can see how I have it mapped. So you can see the main, number one is the laptop display. And the others are the external monitors. Right there, Ryzen 7 Pro 5850U. This is a 15 watt TDP low power mobile processor with the integrated Radeon graphics. Uh, these Radeon graphics, they are based off of the Vega 8. However, they're not exactly the same as the ones that are labeled as Vega 8. Like, for example, I have an older ThinkPad, if you guys have seen my old video from 2018. So I was one of the early adopters of the first generation AMD ThinkPad. So this is the A485, which today the equivalent would be like the T14 uh, AMD version. So the reason why I got this is because I wanted a 15-inch Ryzen laptop that could drive multiple displays externally. That had compatibility with the docking station so that kind of ruled out the e-series so for those wondering there's the e-series the l-series and the t-series the t-series is the highest end one but unfortunately there's no 15 inch uh, amd option as of yet um, and there's no p-series option on the 15 inch either um, but i needed the numeric keypad i wanted that i wanted docking station compatibility and i wanted a 15 inch screen so that kind of locked me into the l15 so the L15 kind of checks all the boxes in terms of it gives you that 8-core 16-thread processor. As you can see here, we get the full 8 cores, so 16 threads there total. Um, it gives you, you know, virtualization, um, long battery life. Uh, I just wish the battery was a bigger capacity because then it would, even, it would have even better battery life. Um, but for productivity, if you're going to be using this as like a work computer, uh, I definitely recommend it. It's really good. It has the backlit keyboard with two brightness levels. No RGB. I don't really care about RGB. I think white is white LEDs is enough. That's what they give you. So you got the backlit keyboard. You have the Think shutter on the top. So if we go up here, just kind of look at it. You have that where you can close the webcam cover there. So that's in there. Um, you know, you have pretty much what you'd expect from a ThinkPad. You got the classic track point with the mouse buttons the middle scroll button you have the touchpad or trackpad um, with all the, the gestures pinch to zoom etc you know like i said the power button you have a fingerprint reader too that's pretty convenient there's also like the the facial recognition way to log in as well with windows hello um, and the pin number so there's all that stuff you can see on the back here kind of how it's all wired up so the dock takes care of all your cabling so you can and that's also kind of what I wanted. I wanted ease of use. I like the dock more than like the a USB-C based dock because this is just, you just statically leave all this stuff here. You don't have to worry about plugging in any cables. You just kind of slide it in. So if we wanted to undock this, you just pull it out. You can see all the monitors automatically turn off and we're good to go. And you just pick it up and there you go. So if we look here on the side, you can see you've got the USB-C for charging. You have another USB-C, which can also be used for charging. And then you have the dock connector. So these three ports 
this, this these two USBs plus this connector, these three together are used for the docking station. Then you have a uh, always on USB super speed. There's a 3.1 Gen 1 uh, that can be used to charge like phones or something while the laptop is in standby. You have an HDMI 2.0. Again, compared to the Intel one, the Intel one is HDMI 1.4B, but here you get a 2.0 because it's because of the Radeon integrated graphics. You have a 5G, like a SIM card option. You have a micro SD card slot there. You have full gigabit ethernet, RJ45. You could have a smart card reader if you're in like an office setup, you need a remote access key or something like that. Uh, moving on, there's really nothing on the front. Uh, you can see it's relatively thin and light, it's very similar in thickness to the T-Series. It is a tiny bit thicker than the T-Series, but it's very negligible. The weight of the laptop, for those wondering, is 4.3 pounds, 4.38 pounds, and whatever that is in kilograms. Um, you can do the math on that. So you can see it's downward firing speakers. Unfortunately, I, I prefer top firing speakers, but the thing with downward, you get better bass, and you don't have to worry about spilling like water or something on top of these and ruining these. So that's kind of more durable in that regard. Um, then you have your microphone and headphone combo jack, or 3.5 jack. You have another uh, super speed USB, but I think this one is not a powered one. It doesn't have the battery symbol. This one is also on the daughter board. If you were to open this up, you would see that there, this is on a separate daughter board. There's like three screws you can take it off. You can replace it if this port ever goes bad, whereas the rest of them are on the motherboard. And then you have a vent for the APU exhaust. You have a Kensington lock there. You have the classic ThinkPad hinges. You can see that they're relatively, those are definitely metal or aluminum hinges, I believe. Um, and that's pretty much it. But finally decided to bite the bullet on this because I wanted the Zen 3, AKA Ryzen 5000 series in a laptop to replace my aging uh, 2000 series APU first gen. You can see it's a matte screen. It's a 1080p screen for those wondering. A 1080p with, uh, I think it's 45% NTSC. Uh, I don't know what the RGB color gamut is. Um, but it could be, it could do better with like a 72% NTC, which would translate over to roughly almost 100% sRGB. But the contrast ratio on this is 700 to 1. It's a 60 hertz IPS panel. Uh, let's do a flicker test here. So if I turn down the brightness all the way down, the camera should be able to pick up any flicker. And we don't see any flicker. And this is consistent with the notebook check review that I read online. You can see there's no there's no PWM uh, flicker because we're using they're using DC current um, for the backlight. So that's very good on this. Uh, fingerprint to log in instantly. If we redock the system. Give it a second here. I see my mouse is lighting up. And there we go, back online. All three external displays plus the mouse. And you can use headphones as well on the docking station as well if you don't want to keep transporting them with you. But yeah, that's an option as well. Um, the other thing is the memory. So it comes with 16 gigs of RAM. Um, I put a second stick in there, so I have 32 gigs in here. So for the specs, it says you can do, um, or it mentions two drives. Well, well, it doesn't say two drives. It says storage support is one drive up to the minimum is 120, 128 uh, on a 2242 or a one terabyte 2280. So what this means is it ships from the factory with anything from a 128 up to a one terabyte. Um, and that's gonna be on that actual SSD port, not the WAN slot. The WAN slot is not going to support SSD. Unfortunately, I don't know why. I think that's one of the limitations of this generation uh, from Lenovo. You cannot install a 2242 SSD on the WAN module. It doesn't say that you can. Although this is very misleading, but there are, I, I read reviews of people trying to install one of these like a, a western digital i actually tried the western digital ssd and it didn't work the sn 520 it did, it did not work i have one currently working in 
my old ThinkPad AMD, like the A485, and it works fine. But it doesn't work in this thing for some reason. So if you wanted to put a second drive in, it won't work. You, you, the only option is to upgrade the existing one by cloning it to a larger capacity drive. Uh, unfortunately, that's probably the biggest setback or the biggest negative thing I can find about this laptop. Um, but it applies to not just to the L15, but to other, like the L14 is affected and even the Intel models are also affected. Um, yeah, I don't know why that is, but uh, that and the battery being 45 watt hour, which is really bad. Um, they really should have put a 57 watt hour, basically the same one found in the P series or the 15 inch ThinkPad. I think the T series are on 57 watt hour. I don't know why they didn't just put the 57 watt hour in here. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. 45 watt hour is just not enough. It's telling you you can get up to 10.6 hours. Whereas on the other ones, you're doing like 15 hours supposedly. So whatever that translates into into real world, it's more like this is probably eight hours and those other ones are probably like 10 hours. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of a negative thing. Mine shipped with the 1080p, 250 nit, 701 contrast ratio, 45% NTSC screen. You can kind of see how the color looks if we move this out of the way and go ahead and throw this up here so you guys can see how the color compares to a a much higher end display the monitor above it or actually all three of these monitors up here are 144 hertz gaming mod these are 24 inch 1440p monitors um yeah so you can see how the color like on this the sky is not as blue Whereas on here, you can definitely see the gradient better in terms of the blue on the sky. Um, so the contrast is not as good as these other ones. Um, and those above there, those are gaming. Those are TN panel. This is an IPS model. So this is going to have better viewing angles. But other than that, the color reproduction is going to not be as good just because it's a relatively low-end, entry-level display. All right, let's... Let's show gaming performance on it, because people are going to ask about gaming performance. So I'm going to load up Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers on the laptop right now, so you guys can get an idea of how it performs. Keep in mind, there is no, no external graphics. There's no um, discrete GPU. This is running literally off of the integrated AMD Radeon graphics. So let's go ahead and just log in here. Let's go ahead and look at uh, the performance so you guys can see. So let me just bring up the FPS in game. We are running this on standard laptop, so not minimum, but not like anything great in terms of the graphics settings. It's standard laptop. I'll just zoom in so you guys can kind of see the FPS. So we're hovering right below 40 FPS in the city, in Old Da. So let's just run around. You guys can see kind of how it looks. I'm gonna go outside here. Let's go, actually, you know what? Here, let's, uh, Let's see what I want to do here. Let's just run outside and see what there's other NPCs or any other player, player characters. So you can see it's doing 30, almost 40. So not all that great for gaming. This is an MMO, so it's stressing the CPU and the GPU. Um, it tends to be more... Final Fantasy XIV is a very good game to benchmark. Uh, it's not a new game, but it's DirectX 11. And it's not like super, super old. Uh, like... I don't know, um, like Bioshock or something, um, but it's not super uh, new either. It's not like Cyberpunk or any of those games. So this, so right there, you can see it dropping around 30, um, and that's kind of in line with my old ThinkPad. So my old ThinkPad would do at best around 30 FPS um, while gaming in this game. And keep in mind, this is 1080p resolution. So I'm playing this in, so you can see it's using the Radeon, um, and then we're running it in borderless window, which is 1080p. I know it says 720, but that's not correct. So we can move it, to, we can do full screen here just to show um, that we're showing 1080p, and again, it's the same frame rate. So if we were to bump this down to 720p, because people are probably going to wonder, like, what does that perform like? So let's do 1366 by 768. So now we are getting 50 FPS, 53, so around 50. So basically you're getting like 10 more if you jump to 720. But if you're playing an MMO, uh, I think 
I would rather play at 1080p 40 as opposed to 720 50 just because you can see more stuff on the screen and it's not it's neither one of them are 60 so neither one of them are buttery smooth um, but they're both above 30 so they're not like under 30 which would basically be unplayable in my book so for MMO that's respectable for integrated graphics keep in mind this is integrated graphics it's not a discrete there's no discrete graphics like if I run this on my Legion with a 4800 H with uh, a, a GTX 1650 Ti, 1650 Ti. That's nothing to brag home about or write home about. But the 1650 Ti runs it at 60 frames per second um, at maximum. So just to give you guys an idea, if you wanted a gaming laptop, um, but I wanted something that works with the dock, and I wanted to upgrade my from my old, my three-year-old, uh, you know, first-gen Ryzen. ThinkPad, which didn't have the best battery life, um, but yeah, and I wanted a 15-inch laptop too that was thin and light. So, because my gaming laptop, the Legion, is not too heavy, but it's not like it's not a sack of bricks, but it's not like a light novel in my bag. It's still relatively heavy, this thing. So, um, it's nice to be able to go back to traveling with like a thin and light again. So, anyway, guys, that's basically what I wanted to show. Um, I felt like there wasn't a lot of coverage on this particular machine and I wanted to kind of give it more visibility for those curious. So and so you can see you can do basic gaming on it without too much trouble and it's definitely a much better improvement in terms of the experience over the first gen because my first gen like 30 was my average and it would dip below that it would get to like 25. But now running around the city with like all the other players in the town, um, I'm not noticing it ever fall below 30, which is great. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. So anyway, guys, and that's with maintaining like the extra monitors for all this extra real estate here. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know if you have any questions below in the comments. And if you like this content, feel free to subscribe. I want to try to do more tech videos. Um, and if I get a lot of likes on this video, I'll probably do a follow-up. I'll probably do like more tech related content in mobile and as well as desktop because we've got like a thread river build coming up later this year. So anyway guys, like I said, that's gonna be it for me on this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the content and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.